What is up my peeps? Joshua Smith here and welcome to the GSD Mode Podcast. So real quick, before we jump into today's epic, amazing podcast interview, make sure to check us out at gsdmode.com where you can see previous interviews as well as a bunch of other free resources that will help you massively grow your real estate business. Also, if you enjoy and find value and see value in the content here at GSD Mode, make sure that you share the show with somebody that you feel can benefit from the content that we are releasing. This show is possible because of all your support and your support truly means a lot. Now let's jump into today's interview and go have some fun. Peace. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast where every single week I interview top, top entrepreneurs, top real estate professionals, and just those that are straight up dominating their space. These are people choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create greatness for themselves, for their families, as well as make a positive impact, a huge positive impact on others. And today, you guys, we got a, another rock star guest on the show, good friend of mine. This is actually her third time on the show, and I would say that out of any guests we've, we've had, she's the most requested to get back on the show from, from you of our listeners. Um, and this chick's a straight up badass, man. So operates a very successful real estate team, um, uh, has three other companies, a coaching, a speaking company, um, a, another a business that we'll talk about today, um, real estate investments on top of that. Um, but one thing that I really uh, respect and, and look up to our, our guest uh, here today uh, for on a personal level is, and we we're just talking about this before we hit the record button, but she's somebody that just enjoys this industry. You know, she grinds hard, grows her business, but she finds time to go out there and have fun. And in, in, in her business, she has fun, but also in her personal life. And, and um, you know, this can be such a rat race. It can be the, the hamster in the wheel if we're not careful. Um, and this is our, our guest today, somebody that's just a model of you know, how to go out there and just make this a, a fun industry and a fun lifestyle. So really stoked and honored to have my good friend, Rachel Adams Lee on the show. The show. What's up, buddy? Yeah, dude, th this is awesome. It's, it's been a couple years. The last time I had you on the show, you, you were just Rachel Adams, not Rachel Adams Lee. I think you're just getting married. Yeah, no, I have. Yeah, so I'm, I'm stoked to be here first off. It's fun. Thank, thank you. Um, I feel like we just follow each other on social media and see what's happening in each other's lives. <laughs> and every time again, we're like sending a message. Um, yeah, I've been married two years now. So we, I ended up meeting my husband on Tinder. So no haters out there. You can swipe right and find your soulmate. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a, it's amazing. It's been a wild ride, but he's like my favorite human in the world. That's so awesome. And you, and you got a, a, another big change coming up in yeah. 30 days, huh? So I've got a little uh, massive, actually. So we're <laughs> 35 weeks pregnant. So um, first baby for me, it is, um, so it's my parents' first grandbaby, and then it's his parents' 15th. So he's a huge family. And I'm five feet tall. He's 6'3". And we just had an ultrasound, and they were like, well, his head's measuring two and a half weeks bigger than his body. I'm like, oh, snap. Like, this is going to be a long, I'm like, we're going to have a big, and then we went and got the ultrasound done. And they said, um, we did the 40 thing. And she said, she goes, you know, I've been doing this 11 years and I probably do 15 to 20 of these a day. It's very rare to see a double chin in the womb. And I'm like, oh God, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm definitely taking care of this kid with the nutrition, man. Yeah. No, that's so amazing. And congrats on all that. It's, it's so killer. Um, you know, and, and, and with that being said, and, and real, real quick, those of you that are watching, listen, if you didn't see Rachel's previous uh, interviews, um, again, this is the third time that she's been on the show. I'm going to have links below for those, which those go deep into how she got her start in real estate, how she developed her team and, and her success journey there. So we're really just going to pick up since last time we, we've talked. Um, but with that being said, man, you, you've got a, a team of 15. You know, right? And you guys are doing a lot of business. You've got these three other businesses that that can be very demanding on your time and taxing on your time. And and um, but you're somebody that's very prepared, right? So, um, you know, with this, like, how do you structure with your business and your life? You know, right? Because now you're getting ready for some downtime. Yeah. You know, right? Um, uh, can you just like walk us through? You know, because so many jump into this business and they're just solo entrepreneurs and they're never able to take a vacation or maybe they had six weeks off uh, because of, of, you know, a birth of a child or whatever. But during that time, it can be a stressful time where they're not even able to enjoy it because they're so stressed about business. 
then when they, they get back to work, it's like restarting all yeah. over. So can I kind of go deep into, you know, just your overall business structure and like, how do you structure it where it, you don't have to take a huge step back in your business? Yeah. I mean, I think that's like the question that everybody goes through, right? Like, how do you have this life by design? So my husband and I always talk about the life by design, right? So it's doing what you want to do when you want with who you want to do it with. And when we get into real estate, a lot of people get in because they're like, you know what? I want to make my own schedule. I want flexibility. I want freedom. And then they're pissed off that they don't have, that they're not closing, you know, five houses a month or 10 houses or even one a month. They're like, what's the difference between me and all these other real estate agents that are just killing it? And reality is, you, when you're working, you have to treat your business like a business. It is not sexy and time blocking really matters. It's important, right? So time blocking, um, having mentors in the business, knowing what your goals are. Like I always said, cause I'm like real fluffy. Like I would much prefer like hug somebody than like a handshake. And I remember that my business coach, we were talking and he was like, so where, where are you at for the month? And I was like, Oh, I don't know, but I'm really busy. I'm going on this appointment, that appointment. And he's like, I don't care where are you at for the month? And I was like, I'm, I'm not a numbers girl. And he's like, well, if you're going to be professional, you better know your numbers. And I was like, oh, okay. And so, you know, knowing that, so I have, we have 15 people on the team, but I'm still in listing. So I'm the lead listing agent on the team. I had you know, three listing appointments this week. Um, and with like my real estate coaching and the other companies we have, like, you can't just sit back and wait for everything to happen for you because when you're in real estate, we are in a reactive business, meaning our phone rings, we answer it. The appraiser calls, right? The locks box isn't installed or the sign's not there and whatever happens, we drop whatever we're doing and we react. And that's not ever going to get you to your goal because if you're constantly reacting to the world around you, you can't ever be proactive and enjoy what's happening because you're always just waiting for the next call or the next emergency. And so I think the first thing is becoming proactive versus reactive, right? So I know that a baby is coming and I've known it for a while and that doesn't mean I'm perfect. Like I, in the very beginning when we found out we were pregnant, um, so I speak and travel around the country about 60% of the year. And I, the way that I tell my husband we're going somewhere is I send him a calendar invite and it's like, Hey, we're going to New York for four days or we're going, you know, wherever. And that's our system that works for us. Right. And so I got a speaking invite um, and I was going to be going to Boston. Um, I was actually going to go to Boomtown. And um, I sent him a calendar invite. And he comes over to me and he takes my hands and he's like, we, can we talk for a second? And I'm like, uh-oh. Because like physical touch is my love language. And I know that if he's sitting down with me, I'm like, I'm in trouble. Like I did something. And he was like, hey, babe, so you just booked um, Boston, you know, next year. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, do you remember that that's the day the babies do? And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> I totally forgot because it was like, we just found out we were pregnant. And so it was like my first aha moment of life's going to change a little bit. And if I just wait for the stress to come and the nesting and all the crazy stuff, I'm going to be in a bad, in bad position. So instead I'm like, how can I be proactive about this? What does this look like? So it's almost like whether you're having a baby or you have a vacation coming up, you need to have your lead generation activities dialed in and strategically so that your business can continue while you're living your life. Right? Because it would be so terrible and it'd be pointless for me to have this baby and then not be able to be present in its life. You know, like whatever is important to you, like if it's breastfeeding or if it's whatever it is, but like, I don't want to be the person who's always like on my phone, on my phone, on my phone, when the baby is sitting there trying to make eye contact with me. So one of the things that I did to be proactive is I looked at my four main lead legs. So I always say like, I want you to think of your business like the legs of a chair. And if there's four legs to your chair, what are the four legs to your business going to be? And by that, I mean, what are the four main ways that you have leads coming in, right? Now, I know that for me, social media is a massive, massive leg of my business, right? Um, three years ago, we had 23 closings from social media, then 64, and last year was 117. So I look at what's working, and I know social media is massive for me. And the thing that I love about social is you can prep ahead, you can work ahead. So I pre-recorded, um, I have been pre-recording 32 YouTube videos to distribute while I'm on baby leave. Um, I have blog posts ready to go. I have social media posts prepped and ready to go in my phone. Um, I use an app called Google Keep. 
Um, it's killer. You can like prep your posts. You can put your pictures in there. So I usually have like my next like seven posts always ready to go. But this is the thing. Like a lot of people, when they're looking at lead generation, they're looking at building their real estate business. They say, all right, I know that I'm going to be really good on social media and I'm going to get all these buyers and sellers. I like to think a little bigger than just buyers or sellers. Yes, I'm offering, you know, where to watch the fireworks on the 4th of July and Christmas tree lighting locations and, you know, where the local pumpkin patch locations are. However, I challenge everyone listening to this, think a little bit bigger. So when I look at this, I think if I have this YouTube channel and I have a door knocking script that works super duper well, I want to share it. I want to share it with everybody because your referral business does not just have to be your neighbor, Joe, who wants to buy a house or the grocer, you know, Josh, you might have someone who's looking to relocate in Northern California. And you're like, dude, I just scored this listing from my friend, Rachel, from this door knocking script that she created. The only way I could think her is by sending her business. I can send her a card, but she'd much rather have a referral check. Right. And so you reach out to me and that's the way we can do this back and forth. So I have like a, a, a video coming out about, um, social media and a shifting market, like literally how to build your business around social media as your market is shifting. I have one all about scripts. So a lot of people don't like scripts. They don't like script practice. They're like, it's just not my thing. And yet I will tell you the reason that I hit top 1000 agents in the country in three years is because I have mastered scripts and I love them. And so I walk people through how you can under, how you can shift your mindset from not liking a script to loving a script. And then I give a couple of my top scripts for like, you know, price reductions on a listing or, you know, how to, how to talk about commission, that kind of thing. So I think really it just comes down to being proactive in your business versus reactive and that sexy calendar that y'all want to ignore, like that's your, that's your moneymaker. Yeah. And it's when it comes to that, that being proactive, not reactive, I always call it, you know, being a pop tart realtor. Like they just pop yeah. up when you know, out of the toast when anybody needs them. And, and as you said, we can't, we can't grow a sustainable business that way. Right. You know, so it's success in the planning, you know, right. But in order to plan correctly, like you've got it, you got to know your data, right? Like how did you know you had to create 32 videos? Like you have a, a method, you have a system and you're tracking that data so then you know precisely of, of what you have to do with that. And you know, so it's something that I know it's an unsexy topic. People don't like to talk about it, but it's, it's one of the, like you, if you don't know your details inside your business, it's impossible to have a successful business. So can you just kind of go a little bit deeper into like, what do you do for your tracking to be able to break it down to know, okay, I'm gone this amount of time. I need X amount of videos, these places. Yeah. Like, what, what are those big KPIs that you're tracking inside your business, you know, to give you that information? So I think the main thing is looking at what my needs are, how many closings I need to do, and knowing that there's kind of a percentage of conversion. So I know that every time I put a YouTube video out, I usually get three different referrals from it. Um, a lot of times people are just commenting on the video. A lot of times they're asking if they can get into coaching. Um, sometimes they're just asking for a follow-up, right? So I look at the results of the actions that I'm doing. And that being said, you know, there, I have had times where like when I first got into real estate, I thought that I was going to just slay the business by doing this one ad. And the ad was in a, ma a wedding magazine. And I was like, it's $1,625. However, first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes your dream house. And I was like, I'm going to be known for this. This is it. Like I'm going to, this is my game. And I never received a referral from it. I never received a lead. And because I was broke at the time, every single month when that auto drafted out of my account, I was like, you are an idiot. <laughs> um, but the thing was, what I didn't realize is first comes love, then comes marriage, then you're broke because you just spent all your money on your wedding, right? So I didn't do my research in the beginning. I do my research now. And I know that one of my main sources of influence is my YouTube channel and my social media presence, right? But there's a mindset shift that needs to happen in this. And so I look at my calendar and I literally say, how can I offer value 10 times throughout this week? 10 times. How can I offer value 10 times throughout this week to others? So it's not like a tangible thing where I can say, well, every time that I do a social media post, I get five referrals from it. Cause that's not realistic. What is realistic is consistency. And I am consistently offering value to those around me. And I think the misconception is you have to always be saying, hey, do you want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? When in reality, those agents that all they do is talk about buy a house, sell a house, how to clean your gutters, the five things to get ready for springtime, you drown them out, right? And when a real estate agent emails you, you delete it. 
because most real estate agents, we are 100% deletable. And so when I decided that I wanted to really be proactive about my business, I thought, number one, how can I make myself undeletable to these people? How can I become the resource for them? Whether they need a hairstylist, um, they want to book a Valentine's Day reservation at the an incredible restaurant or they need to know how much their house is worth how can I become that resource and the answer was consistency consistency and always offering value to those around me and so figuring out like what exactly my key gifts are because everyone's is different like I'm a smushy person I love to help people inspire people learn what their goals are and help like dig in and so with my 10 pieces of value each um, each week sometimes it is recording a YouTube video about script practice because people have told me they hate scripts. And I'm like, and, and I, when you get enough of that, I write it down. And if I have several agents coming to me or people around the country saying, this is not my strength, how can I love it and embrace it? I'm like, okay, this is value that I can offer to one person that's going to work for, for a ton. And then again, they thank you by referral because that's usually the way they can. Right. Um, and then another thing is like, say you have a really amazing um, quote that you read, like an inspirational quote, and it really, really resonates with you. I will literally put the, the quote on social media and I will tell people that it resonated with me and why. And then I ask what it means to them because the other piece of lead generation that people skip and they miss is this has nothing to do with us. People work with people they like. And they like you, but they have to have a reason to connect with you. They have to have a reason to like grow and genuinely want to, you know, get something from you because it inspires them. And then when they re reach back out to me, that's my opportunity to kind of continue to build that rapport. What's what's so cool about it is, you know, some people might have a limiting belief of, man, there's so much information out there already for real estate. Let's just say like you said, hey, if you got this great door knocking script, just yeah. go out there and, and share it with the world, right? But the, yeah, there's a lot of information, but the reality is there's very little good quality information. Yeah. Yeah, right? So it isn't, it isn't the saturated place that people are so fearful of. You know, and I, I know realtors that, dude, in six months went from a nobody to a rock star. Not nobody as a human being, but I mean, you know, zero, created their YouTube channel the six months like having a big following. And I mean, it can happen quickly. Um, but with that, so you're, you're, it sounds like you really kind of do it twofold. Like you're putting content out there for other real estate agents throughout the country to learn and grow from um, that can then reciprocate through sending you referrals in your area. Um, but then in the local community, you know, when you look at the hyper local, you know, whether it's business interview, local business interviews, like you, you're kind of alluding to, you know, what are you doing there that that's doing really well? Like what style is working? What's good? Cause it, I think that, I mean, a lot of people understand that, Hey man, I got to get video content out there. I've got to be on social media. I think the yeah. hardest part for most is what the hell do I do? What do I, what do I talk about? What do I create content around? Okay. Love that question. Um, and one thing I will do when we hang up is I'm going to give you a copy of what I'm kind of going to talk about because I think it's really beneficial. So like I said, like most, what happened for me is, so I got in real estate when I was 26. And you know, those of you who know my story, I started door knocking 200 doors a week and doing three open houses a week. Like I hustled hard. Um, I was paycheck behind a paycheck. Like life was very challenging for me at that point. Um, and I didn't like where I was at in life, but I, I know I needed a change. And so I committed really closely to lead generation and I also, those three open houses, every time that I hosted an open house, I'd post on social media and I'd say, come see my open house, come see my open house. Now I didn't say come see my listing because that's out of integrity, but I did see come see my open house. And what happens is perception is reality. So all these people out there are like, who the heck is this blonde chick and how does she have so much business? When in reality, I didn't have a single listing, <laughs> but they thought I did because I was always sharing what I was doing. And so that was kind of like my first aha, right? And then the other thing I thought about is, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I literally look at my phone and I go through it and I say, okay, delete, 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 delete. Who can I delete without even opening it? And I realized that almost all real estate agents, like I touched on earlier, we're deletable because we say the same thing. We're not off actually offering value. We're just, it's like duplicated. Cause if you get one of those, you sign up for one of those like drip campaigns and you're like, Oh, I'm going to just convert all my database. I'm going to pop all my friends in here. And then they're like, Oh my God, stop sending me your spam. Like this stuff is garbage. It's because it's not who you are. So people work with people they like. Right? So the first thing I did is I, I made a rule 
that 80% of what I posted about, 80% of what I shared about locally was going to be personal. It's what I'm doing, where I'm going, what I'm reading, what I'm eating, travel, my marriage, like things that matter to me. And then 20% of what I talked about was going to be real estate related. So what I did is I took, um, so at Keller Williams, we have this thing called the 33 touch. And while I love the idea of it, it's a drip campaign. And it's the five ways to get your house ready for springtime. Buy now, sell now. And I was like, this is never going to work with me because this would never resonate with me. So as a team, um, my real estate team, we sat down at a big um, boardroom and I said, all right, you guys, who are we? What are we about? Like, how can we give back to the community? So, you know, obviously it was my, what our mindset was, is how can we give to our community 33 times throughout the year? So we created a 33 touch campaign around giving. Now it's not necessarily like donating what you would think, but it was, um, so every single person, of course, you're going to call them four times a year, right? Like it's the normal lead generation activities. And yet we thought, okay, um, one of the things we do, which I love, love this, like it was game changer for us is in January, we literally reach out to all of our database and we offer to make their Valentine's day reservations for them every one of these people. Okay. And there's a, this is like twofold. So I'm going to teach you guys um, how you can offer value to your people, but then also use this to get business as well from that restaurant. So we basically would reach out to, you know, 15 different restaurants, all different price points, different cities locally for us. Um, I'm in the Sacramento market. So everything's like 20 to 30 minutes away. That's where all the cities are. So I would literally, um, go to the restaurants and I'd say, Hey there, you know, my name is Rachel Adams Lee with Keller Williams Realty. And, um, I ran with the top real estate teams in the area. And what we are looking to do is we're actually going to be helping our clients book their Valentine's day reservations. So I was wondering, can you kind of give me a head start on what your restaurant's doing, what some of the specials are, because what we have done, we have over 25,000 followers through social media and we have a massive database. So what that means is that we can help fill your restaurant and make sure that there's no empty seats. And they're like, well, what does that cost? Like, oh, it actually doesn't cost anything. It's just one of the value that we like to give to our local community. They're like, fantastic. So we have a, um, a sheet. We use Canva. Have you heard of Canva? Yep. Okay, cool. So it's like a, for those of you who don't know, it's like a very inexpensive, it's like $12.95 for the upgraded version of Canva and it's graphic design for like dummies, which is kind of what I need. Um, and that being said, if you see anything I do online, I have not made it. My amazing marketing people make it because I really, it's not my strength. Um, so we have all the restaurants on this like pretty sheet and it has by city and all of that. And when I call my clients, I say, Hey, you know, this is Rachel. I'll be a real estate agent. Um, I know it's been a little while since we chatted because sometimes life happens and we suck and we don't call them for a year, right? So I know it's been a little while since we chatted, but I wanted to reach out to you and let you know that, you know, as always, one of the things that's really important to me is not just be your real estate agent of choice, but to make sure that I'm always giving value to your life. So this year, one of the things we're doing is we're actually helping our clients book their Valentine's Day reservations. Um, have you thought about Valentine's Day? And it's like January 15th and no one's thought about Valentine's Day, right? They're like, oh, uh, no, I totally haven't. But if you wait, so you're going to make my reservation for me. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to make your reservation for you and I'm going to confirm it and everything. We'll send you the location. So at last year I called 474 people in my database and I offered to do this and only seven of them took me up on it. Okay. However, what was super cool is throughout the year I would get referral and referral and referral. And when they'd call me, they're like, are you the Valentine's realtor? And I was like, what? But I realized just because people aren't actually taking you up on your offer, it's the inviting that matters. It's the fact that you, you did something outside the box. Um, and so I became a Valentine's realtor and I'd get referrals and they joke around that they, they call me that like I'm in one of their phone as Valentine realtor. And it's because no, no one does that, you know? And so again, it's like, how can you offer value? Um, and so we literally took our 12 months and this is what I'll send to you is our, our touch campaign. We took our 12 months and we literally broke it down January through December. And it was, what is four things we can do every month to add value. Now, um, we are not the team that's going to send you a email about the time change. There's 900 people doing that. That's not value to me. That's annoying. <laughs> um, however, you know, you know that I'm huge on door knocking and that's how a lot of our listings come about. And so, um, 
we have a, of those 33 touches, we took 12 of them and made a 12 touch value campaign. So 12 times throughout the year when we're door knocking on one side is going to be the just sold, like what just sold in your market. On the other side is going to be where to watch the fireworks on the 4th of July or Christmas tree lighting locations. Um, we had a really cool uh, need brought to our attention a year before last, and it was about veterans coming back from overseas and needing to get a job, but they can't afford a suit. So we created a drive called Suit for Soldiers, and we literally door knocked the community, um, and we said, hey, you guys, you know, obviously, we love this community. We work here, and we're your real estate agents of choice, and we want to make sure we're always giving back. A need was brought to our attention that there's a lot of veterans who want to get a job, and they don't have a suit to do it. So we actually are doing a suit drive for soldiers. So if you have any suits that maybe, you know, um, you're not wearing anymore, they don't fit quite like you'd like, <laughs> or, um, you know, that you're just not into, we would love if you donate it. So Josh, we did a video on social media about it, right? Um, we partnered with the local veterans association and we hired three tailors. So we actually held an event where all these veterans would come in and we custom fit a suit to them. And I had this woman come to me and she, her husband lost his leg, um, overseas and he was in a wheelchair and she has tears in her eyes. And she said, the fact that you're going to custom fit a suit to my husband means everything because we had to tie his suit leg off with a hair tie. That's how we got him ready. And she's like, you don't know what this means to me. And the other piece to it is with getting to know your community. Um, we took the script, right? And we're door knocking as our team. And this guy opened up his door. His name was Bill and beautiful home. And he said, and I kind of, you know, did my spiel and he's like, Oh, you're so suits. And I said, yeah, he goes, well, I used to work in the Bay area and I'm, I'm, I don't work in the Bay anymore. I work out of my home. So I have a ton of suits. Do you want them right now? And I was like, okay. He gave me 30 suits, 30. Yeah. And some of them are like brand new, you know? And so I'm like, Oh my God. So I'm like taking them all to my car. And you know, I think the number one thing when people door knock is they don't know how to get the information. They don't know how to actually grow their database. They're like, thanks, bye, awkward, already. So I wanted to say, okay, how can I connect with um, these people and how can I add value to them but get their information and, and grow my business at the same time? So what I said is, I was like, you know, Bill, thank you so much for donating these suits. You have no idea the impact you're going to make. It would mean the world to me if I could show you a picture of the families you help make an impact on, would it be okay with you if I get your information? And then when we um, host our event, I'll send you some photos of the veterans and just kind of, you know, maybe some of them are in your suit, but I want you to see that you are really making an impact. And then because I'm also an in integrity, I said to him, also, we have some really fun events coming up at the end of the year, like Santa and Mimosas. Um, and I would love to be able to invite you and your wife to that, if that's something you're interested in. And he was like, yeah, that sounds great. So then all of a sudden I get to add him to my database. And then because I'm the agent, the kind of agent that does what I say I'll do, I sent him the picture and he called me and he was like, I actually never thought I'd hear from you again. And I was like, but I told you I was going to call you. He's like, yeah, but most agents, they say stuff and they don't follow through. And he didn't need to sell his house, but he sent me um, a $460,000 buyer and he sent me a $1.4 million buyer. And he's, when he introduces me, he always does it through text and he always says like, Hey, you know, this is Bill. Um, I want to introduce you to Rachel. She's an agent that keeps her word. And it's like, it, that's the good stuff, right? So this 33 touch is 33 ways locally that we can give back and connect with our database. Um, and I'll share it with you. And I have a YouTube video that kind of breaks it down and all that too, if they want to check it out. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, with, with today's day and age with, with the connection to social media, you know, that, that exists out there, it, it's like, you don't even have to have the real estate conversations, you know, mm -hmm. right? Like once you connect there, they're going to see that 20% that you have, that's about business or, or you know, whatever, they're going to see that. It's just about the human connection, right. so have the human connection, get connected on social, you know? So in that case, like, like with Bill um, getting his email, I mean, are you then also being intentional from requesting people on social media, like on Facebook or, or things of that. So they start seeing some of the other stuff or how are you then kind of getting them into your social worlds? Yeah. So I, so, um, 
it's a little different for me because I'm out of, I don't have any friends requests left on Facebook. Um, so what I do is I will reach out to them as a private message. So my approach is always to reach out through private message to them because I feel like that's much more personal of a connection. And then they will friend request me or they'll follow me. And so if they want a friend request me and I'm like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Like I'm, you know, I've unfortunately I'm asked, I will literally say, let me delete someone and make, make room for you. They feel so special. And like my, my system is to delete people on their birthday. Cause I, that's my only like filter. <laughs> and I don't know, like, cause you know, when you first get in, you're like, ada, 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 ada. so I have all these people and I'm like, I don't even know who the heck you are and we don't engage. So I'm happy to delete them. But, um, yeah, I mean my, I, I'm in about investing in them and if they choose to follow me back, that's fantastic. But I think the thing is people they expect because they make a post on Facebook about or Instagram about being a realtor that they deserve the business. You don't deserve it. You don't, you have to earn that business. And so when someone comments on my social media and they say like, Oh my gosh, Rachel, like, so say I have like an anniversary with Ryan and we're in Tahoe. They're like, Oh my gosh, Rachel, like happy anniversary. And they comment on my post. Most people just write back, you know, say you have a birthday, and you have like a hundred people right on your page or 500 people, whatever your influence is. And at the end, you're like, thanks everybody for wishing me a happy birthday because that's like what we do. The missed opportunity here is when you make a post or when someone comments, every person who comments on your post or who likes your post is literally saying like, hey, hey, I see you. Hey, I want to engage with you. Like I'm right here. And most of us, we just say, perfect. I'm going to reach out and I'm going to say, oh, it's so good. Thanks for commenting on my anniversary post. Did you want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? It's like you instantly lost them. Like you suck at your job and you should get off social media. <laughs> but that's what most people do. So instead, what I like to do is every person that engages with me, whether they like my post or they comment, I will reach out to them through, through a private message. And I'm like, hey, Bill, thank you so much for commenting on my anniversary post. We had the best time in Tahoe. And then before that, I looked at Bill's social media and I saw that his little one, Johnny, just graduated from kindergarten. So I'll be like, gosh, Bill, I just saw that Johnny just graduated from kindergarten. What a huge milestone for you guys. I bet you're so proud. And then Bill's going to write back and say, oh, Rachel, oh my gosh, I am. Thank you so much. Like we it's, can't believe how fast he's growing. Looks like you have a little one on the way. And I'm like, yep, I do. We're due August 19th and we'll have this back and forth. And then I always, I always will go back and forth quite a few times. And then eventually I always will ask Bill, so Bill, do you have any big goals for the rest of the year? And he'll answer however he does. What happens when I ask somebody about their goals? Well, they're going to talk about themselves and their goals their goals. And then eventually they're going to ask about my goals. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's right? awesome. so it's, 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 re it's reciprocated. And then what I can say is, Oh my gosh, you know, well, one of the biggest goals I have this year is still taking care of however many houses you plan to sell, you know, 50 houses this year. And you know, I, it would mean the world to me I mean, because you're someone I know and trust. It would mean the world to me. If you hear maybe looking to buy or sell a house to support me in that goal. So I never just like boom real estate or boom business, you know, because we have not only the real estate business, we have the shampoo company and whatever industry, whatever I'm talking about, I'm never just going to call someone and ask for the business because I haven't earned it. I want to genuinely connect with them and invest with them. And then remember that people work with people they like, and if they like you, they're going to want to work with you. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And, and, you know, and like you said, when you're asking them about their goals and, and their life first, and then how can I support you at your goals and seeing how you can support them? Yeah. Right. As you mentioned, the law of reciprocity kicks in and then it doesn't make you asking for their support, you know, like a negative jab, if you will, because you know, you've already asked how you can support them now. And I may have missed this, but that's, is that something you're doing in the chat thread or is this, is this, have you carried this over? You think I'm in a private message? It's private message. Okay. Yeah, so I'll usually have like one kind of surfacey comment on their comment, but then I private message. And the, the other thing that is everyone that they forget that just because they comment doesn't mean that's your only opportunity. Your likes are, are people too. They're people who are watching you. And so I really like, you know, people always talk about how to break the algorithm. One of the ways that you can get outside the algorithm, because as you know, you know, there's, 
7% of what your friends, like that was the latest stat that came out in um, June was 7% of your friends are actually seeing what you post. And the highest we can get is 40%. And the way you can get closer to that is by private messaging people, because once you're in their private message and they see you, then you're in back and you're in front of their eyes instead of you know, you're just like, why, why is no one commenting or what is going on? Well, it's because you're not using social media in the proper way. They want you to interact. They want you to connect with these people. And if you just sit back and you're like, like, oh, I'm lead generating, like, 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 you're just a lazy liker. Like you're not actually lead generating. You're just liking people's posts and you're lazy. So if you truly want to treat social media as a business platform to help grow your influence and your impact, you have to know it is not about what you can get, but it's what you can give, right? It's how you can give back to others, how you can connect with them. And I encourage people to like literally take a piece of paper and write down one through five. If you're going to build a business model around social media, post five times a week and pick your five things you're going to talk about. Number one, that's going to be your 80%. That's your industry that you're in. That's your business. And then two through five, it's honestly up to you. It's whatever makes you tick. If you're into like clean eating and working out, if you're into hiking and traveling, if you're into like, you know, shooting guns, like whatever it is, it's what makes you tick. And if you have, if you're married and you have kids, hopefully you like them. That should be one of your five things because people want to know you're human. They want to know that you have like a heartbeat and that you have something in common with them. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. So then, yeah, I have a, a, a one of my mentors, Darren Hardy, yeah. you know, he, 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 the way that he frames social media is like, look, it's, it's, it's no different than reality TV. Um, we just have the opportunity to be the star in our own show. Yeah, you know, right. So you're showing the world, like you're letting the world in and think about it. When you think of your reality, you're like, how, how do you want to appear to the rest of the world? Or at least your, you know, your, your niche that your, your, your Facebook world or whatever. And then when it comes to the, the, you know, 80% that are, that are business that you're posting, cause you, you alluded to, you alluded to this earlier of, you know, the, Oh, just sold in four days for above list price. You got to buy or sell, you know, you know, I, I, the way I stated, or I always tell my teammates is, is, don't be a douche, right? We just have like a don't be a douche on social media, you know, rule with it, yeah. you know, but instead tell stories, yeah. you know, right? Like, like things like, oh, hey, I was just showing a, a, a buyer some homes today and one of their criteria is they, they have to have a resort like backyard. And I saw some of the most amazing backyards today. Um, blower picture of my favorite six. You got to check these out and, and I'd love to hear which one is your favorite. Yeah, right. Or, or just telling stories, you know, through it instead of being the salesy person because then it gets people engaging and it doesn't burn them out. I mean, is that, you know, can you kind of walk us like, what are you doing on those? Because again, I, people just have a hard time sometimes coming up with that content. They don't want to be that douchey person. Totally. So the real estate for us are 20%. We are, we, again, like you literally just nail on the head, but it's about telling a story. So instead of just um, posting a picture of the happy home buyer and seller, right? Um, we are posting a picture of them, but we're telling the story of the, them getting their home accepted and what that looks like. So for example, um, my in-laws purchased a house and they, um, and trust me, working with family can have its challenges. Um, and they're not going to watch this. So it's all good. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I love them. I love them. It's just challenging to work with them. Um, so we, when they closed on their property, I I had this, I said, I want to take a picture of you guys jumping outside your house. And so it's really, you guys can find it on my Facebook page. It's really cute. But there, I I was, you know, trying to get people that are like in their sixties to jump at the same time. Like it was hilarious. And so my mother-in-law, she's, I'm like, okay, one, two, three, jump. And I'm like, mama, your, your foot's still on the ground. She's like, okay. I'm like, and one, two, three, jump. And she's I'm like, mama, you're, you're actually standing. Right. So we took a bunch of these pictures and then eventually we get one where they're in the air. And so I posted on social media and I said, you know, oh, you guys, this one is so personal to me. Um, 15 months ago, my mother-in-law told me that she wants to buy the perfect house. And so we um, were at Thanksgiving and we sat down and we talked about what the perfect home was. And she had 15 things that was her criteria. And we um, set up a portal for her and away we go. And I'm at Mega Camp, which is a real estate convention for Keller Williams. And I get a phone call from my mother-in-law. And this is literally my post. And I said, and I get a phone call from my mother-in-law and she says, hi, sweetie, how are you? And I said, oh, I'm good, mama. How are you? And she says, I'm good. I'm nervous. I'm excited. I said, what, what's going on? She goes, I found the house. I found the perfect house. It hits all of my 15 criteria. I want to buy this house. You have to get it for me. And I want to raise your unborn grandchildren in there. And I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) I was like, no pressure. Right. And 
so then I said, um, and then it says, you like everyone, please help me congratulate my in-laws on their perfect dream home. You know, we did it. And everybody, I mean, this thing got like 400, 500 comments. Everyone was so excited for them because they sat at that kitchen table with me. And then they were there when I got that phone call and then they were like, you know, and, and they, they want to be a part of your world. And so instead of just, you know, um, please congratulate my happy home sellers, share the experience with them, share what it's like. Um, you know, another thing is a lot of agents when they get um, an award, right? You know, those showboaty agents that you're like, you call them like the, the douches, but it's like, look at me, look at me. I got another award. I'm so great. Well, there is a way that you can post an award and the, the miss, the thing that people miss is it's like, remember the reason you got this award is because of the incredible people who've trusted you with the biggest financial decision they'll ever make, which is buying or selling a house. So when you get an award, it's sharing gratitude, giving back, adding value and connecting with these other people and just saying, I got this because of you. Like my business, my life is only as rich as it is because of what you've done for me and how you trust me. And that means the world to me, you know? Um, and so a lot of times, like if, if I'm posting about business, I'm not like, Hey, I'm a real estate agent. Come work with me. I think again, how can I add value to people? How can I make them smile that day? And so we have a, um, we had a picture when it's like we hit a hundred houses, you know, midway through the year of how many we sold. And I have this, um, we have this board in our office where we color in the houses and we write the property address under. So I took a picture of the board and I posted on social media when we hit a hundred and underneath it, I said what that these homes meant to our buyers and sellers. And then underneath that, I said what this home means to our team and, you know, to the buyers and sellers, it was the, you know, the, the gift of home ownership. It was stability. It was, it was, you know, goals achieved. It was working overtime, becoming worth it, all these things. Right. But I was, I knew that I would hit the hearts of a lot of people that were looking to purchase or sell because it hit my heart. And then on the real estate side, it was helping my real estate agents achieve their goals and helping them fulfill their dreams and getting to take their, their little girl to Disneyland for the first time. And, you know, so it was like, it was all heart related. And we got two new agents reaching out who wanted to be on the team because that was an environment they wanted to be a part of. And we got three, uh, two listings and one buyer referral from that post. Not at any point did I say, if you want to buy or sell a house with our team, call us. I just shared what we've done so far and what it meant to us because bottom line is if someone's going to work with you, they're going to ask themselves three questions. doesn't matter the industry you're in three questions. Number one, can you help me? Can you help me? Number two, do I trust you? So do I trust you? And number three, do you care about me? Do you care about me? So can I help you? Do Can you help me? Do I trust you? And do you care about me? And if the answer to those three questions are yes, then you usually have a new person in your world. Yeah, love it. And, and, and you know, one thing that... Um when you talked about the 117 deals you did from Facebook yeah. or from social media, not just Facebook, but um, you know, a lot of people look at that. Like I do a lot of Facebook marketing, you know, right. But that's, you know, a one closing out of 46 deals that, you know, right. To, I mean, it's, it's, you know, 420 dials to, to a deal. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, it's, it's, uh, um, you know, that's just legion through that. And you're, so here you're not talking, I mean, you're talking about referrals, yeah. people coming to you, yeah. not chasing down business people coming to you. Um, you know, so then when people sit there and hear this and think about the time, Oh man, that, that, that can take so much time. You know, right. Try to try to, you know, like my ISA last year, um, 42,000 dials. Right. And they, and it's a, we have a small ISA department and I'm quitted 60 deals in that department but that was eight hours a day, five days a week, pounding the phones, you know, right? So no matter what, we're going to have to invest the time. How do you want to invest the time? Because with these, I'm sure the, those buyer consultations or listing consultations, it's no different than a past client, even if they're new business, because they already know you like you trust you, you know, right? You're not having to, you know, go on battling on commissions like you might with an expired, right? You know, right? So, I mean, it takes intentional work, but you got to pick and choose what work you want to do. You want to cold call and get yelled at for six hours a day, you know, right? Or, um, but with that, then because you talked earlier about time blocking and being intentional with your time because this is, you know, you've got to be very intentional with this. And, and it, it sounds like it can be somewhat time intensive. 
you know, what does that look like? Like on a daily basis, you know, of, of that time investment and how do you structure it? So I am on social media twice a day. Um, I make my posts. So people always say when to post, like, how do you do it? Literally as early as you wake up, that's when you post. You don't need to stress over it or look at analytics because the earlier you post in the day, the more time people have to connect with you and respond. Um, I used to stress out because I'm, I'm, um, I'm West Coast. I was like, what about East Coast? They're up at you know, 8 o'clock my time. It's 5 o'clock their time. It doesn't matter. When you wake up, that's when you post. And for me, I have two times during the day that I time block to respond to people. So I make my post in the morning. And then I have some response time and reach out time. Um, And that is part of my lead generation. So we lead generate on our team two hours every day. um, And that is before the afternoon. So usually the it's like people don't want to lead generate because it's not fun. Whether you're dialing on the phone, you're door knocking, you're on social media. If you're doing it for the purpose of building your business, you have to really tell yourself, I'm doing this to build my business. And you're not always going to want to do that. So it's really important. I think that you do it first thing in the morning. So my, I'll make my post in the morning and then I am reaching out to people. I'm connecting with people. I'm adding value to them. I'm, I'm looking at their pages, right? And I'm, I'm building this rapport. Um, and then in the evening, that's my response time. And so, um, and our, so Ryan and I are like, before I met him, man, I just grinded. Like, I mean, you guys can listen to previous podcast interviews with me and Josh, but it's like, I mean, you know, I was working, you know, seven in the morning till 1030 at night. I had zero boundaries. And I just, I I was in this like scarcity mindset that I had to answer my phone all the time and be totally available. And then when I met Ryan, it was the first time that something mattered to me more than my job. And the one thing that people want from us that love us is our time. And so I said, I have to set some boundaries around um, my work. And so I actually came up with a really good script to set a boundary with my clients so that I could be present at home. And I mean, I, I literally did a buyer broker not that long ago today. I mean, look, at 1130 today, I did a buyer broker. I had two agents in the office with me shadowing me and they, in the, consult, you know, I ask them, I do my whole value proposition and then I set up their portal and then I ask them to sign the exclusive agreement. And they said, well, we want to be fully transparent with you. We're interviewing three agents and you are a third interview. And I said, okay, no, that changed nothing in my mind because I'm going to earn their business. And so I would use word, I would use phrases like when you sign the contract, when you call me to work with me, not if, if you choose me, no, because I don't think about ifs it's when, and literally on my way to come to this office to start this with you, they wrote me a message and said, we're going to go with you. We're really excited. And then I screenshot that and I put it in my team. We have Viber is the app we use for the team. And I post that for the team and it, everyone's on the same page. Um, and everyone's excited. And plus it's good for like brand new agents to be like, oh, we did join her for a reason. She does know what she's doing. Um, but yeah, like setting that boundary, man, like that is everything. So I came up with a script, which I'm happy to share if you want it, but I came up with a script to set the boundary and it has made it so I got my life back and my business is still run. Everyone still responded to on social media. And the other thing to remember is that like, I totally understand that it feels like we are in a life or death situation, but it's just freaking selling houses. We are not saving lives. There is no surgical you know, medical devices in your hands. You are not a surgeon working on someone's heart. You're helping them buy a house. Is it a huge financial decision with lots of emotions? Absolutely. But their emergency does not have to be your emergency. They hired you because you're not a real estate agent. You're a real estate professional. And sometimes we forget to act like one. So it's, you know, maintaining when they're freaking out that the appraisal came in low or, oh my gosh, like whatever the issue is, you're like, you know, I totally understand that. And this is what our options are here. This happens all the time. And I want to walk you through it. I want you to know that I've got your back here and you don't have to be stressed because I've got this, we've got this, I'm on your side. And so a lot of times, like, cause you know, the, the buyers and the sellers, like they freak out, man. And they want to call you at 10 30 at night. And if you answer that phone at 10 30, you're setting your boundary. Yeah. Yeah. It was something that I think a lot of us, when we get into the real estate business, like we, we, we feel the, the obligation to always be available. And I, you know, I used to even pride myself and do I always answer my phone. Right. Yeah. But then quickly realize, well, if I'm always answering my phone, that means that I'm not busy. Right. And 
And, uh, um, you know, when I set those boundaries, you know, it sounds like similar to, to what you've done where I just had, you know, three, three hours, three time slots a day where I would return messages. Um, and as soon as they became a client, just going through that with them of, of what those time frames look like. And okay, if you call me at 9am, you know that to leave a message, I'm going to return your message between noon and 1pm, you know, right. Um, but, and I freaked out. Uh, well, when I said freak, freaked out or I mean, by freaking out is I was very nervous to, to implement it. But I found, I mean, it was so well received. Like, people feel so much safer and better with you when they know what to expect for communication, yeah. when they know when they're going to get a hold of you, when they know they're going to get a response back. And we've had to do the same thing even, even our real estate team. It's like, hey, after these hours, yep. if you call after 5 p.m., you'll get a response the following morning between 10 and 11 a.m. You know, like we just, like you said, led this out with. You can't be reactive. Um, and it's a scary move to make, you know, right? But setting that, I mean, can you, can you, allude to the, because look, dude, you talked about life before Ryan then life after, you know, Ryan, now that you had to set these boundaries, your business is growing. It's not like you've lost business because of it. No, it's grown. We had our biggest year ever last year. We were 79 out of 1000 for the agents in the country. And it was like, what? And I, and I went on, I mean, those of you that follow me on social media, like we traveled everywhere. We were every single month, at least once or twice, we were out of, we were traveling in the country, out of the country. Now, a lot of it is for real estate. And, you know, it's, it, people always say like, are you ever home? And my clients never ask that. They never feel like I'm not there for them. It's just the people outside watching. And then they're also like, well, how are you doing this? And how can I do this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the boundary conversation, like it, it, it's really easy. So it's challenging to do with clients that you already currently have. Um, however, what happens is you're sitting with them. Um, I have a new buyer. Like today I had this buyer, um, Sandy and Wayne, and they're purchasing a house with me. Um, and like I said, I normally do not work with buyers. I only work with sellers. Um, however, my lead listing agent literally had his baby girl at six thirty-five this morning. So my lead agent who normally is helping me is a new dad. So I was like, all right, I'm jumping back in. Um, so I'm doing my buyer broker today and I asked him, I said, so, you know, Wayne, what is the time that you, so what I always say is I want to make sure, cause so we have a, a sheet called the, um, client, um, client care. What is it called? I don't usually fill it out. <laughs> it's the client, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's how we communicate with them. Right. And so, um, they're, they're, they look at the sheet and I'm going to start this over cause I feel like I'm like blubbering. Hold on, client consult checklist. Okay, so we have the sheet and we sit down with them and it's the client consult checklist. And on it, it says their name, their address, their email, their phone number, best way to contact them. And so I'm always, you know, text, email, phone. I'm always like, please circle text, right? Um, and so I sit down with them and I say, okay, so one of the things that's really important to me when you're purchasing a house is that I'm respectful of your boundaries because I know that your life is busy and I want to make sure I'm really respectful of that. Obviously mine is as well. So what would you say is the time that you kind of get moving and get to the office in the morning? And then today they said, uh, I don't know, somewhere between, you know, eight and nine. I'm like, okay, perfect. And what time would you say you get home um, in the evening and you kind of start to unwind for the day? They're like, uh, I don't know, maybe like somewhere between six and eight depends on the day. And I'll say, okay, perfect. So just for, for, you know, my, my understanding is it, would you say the best time to reach out to you for a, a real estate related call is going to be maybe eight in the morning until, um, six o'clock at night. And they're like, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So actually it's so funny. Your hours are very similar to mine. I'm actually available from nine in the morning until seven o'clock at night. So if you have anything you want to chat with me about, that's the best times to get a hold of me. Now, that being said, if there is an emergency and you need to reach out to me, absolutely send me a message and I will do my best to get back to you. But if it's not an emergency and if it's after seven, I'll get back to you the next business day. And they're like, okay, sounds good. And then they go home and they have their new portal and they're excited and they pop open a bottle of wine and it's 9.30 at night and they're super, and they're like, oh my gosh, it's 9.30 at night, I found the house, I have to call Rachel, like I got it. And they call me and it's 9.30 and I answer the phone. So if I answer that phone at 9.30, I've now set my new boundary. So it's like, if you don't respect your own boundary, how can you expect others to do it? So I just, I had to get so crystal clear on really respecting that boundary. And, you know, my husband knows that like we, 
after seven o'clock, like I'm not taking work calls. And that doesn't mean I don't glance at my phone in between watching The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. However, <laughs> um, you know, I, I won't, I, it, it's really hard sometimes because you're like, oh my gosh, I want to call back. They reached out, but you can't, you have to set that boundary and you have to stick to it. Yeah, love it. So then, um, you know, and I know that you've got a speaking, uh, uh, you're, you've got a speaking gig here in about 20 minutes. So, so I want to make sure that uh, we get you there on time and respect your time there. Um, but uh, for those, you know, because I'm just a huge believer in, like, I don't try to figure out anything on my on my own anymore. I just go out there and find the person that's slaying it, find the person that's doing it, um, and. Right, R and D, rip off and duplicate. So that being said, you know, we talk so much about your social media. Um, like, what, what are the, where's the best place for our listeners to, to just watch you in action with this stuff? Is it on Facebook? Is it on YouTube? Is it a combination of all of it? So I would say like the best way to reach out to me is and follow what I'm doing is definitely Facebook um, and Instagram. Those are my two most common social platforms that I can respond well to you. And I do like you'll, if you reach out to me, you will get a response and it's not my assistant. Um, I'm time blocked for it. So you won't get it immediately to be around your schedule, but you'll get it around mine. Um, and then YouTube. So my YouTube channel is jamming, not boundary script that I just gave you. It's on my YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube slash Rachel Adams Lee, and we'll leave the link for you guys, you can, it's a ton of free coaching. It's just like, I've talked about how to plan a client event. Um, I've talked about, uh, you know, again, that social media and a shifting markets coming out. Um, how I went from my first year in real estate, I did, um, sold, uh, um, 30, uh, 39 homes. And then I went to 109, then 123. And I talk you through how you can get break through that hundred transaction barrier with one, uh, two key hires. And so, you know, I, the YouTube channel for me is, is like a passion place. Um, and that's where I always can give back. But if anybody has like a specific thing that they're struggling with, like they want to hire their first admin and they don't know where to look, or they have a big luxury listing presentation coming up. And how does that differ from a regular listing presentation? They can send me a message and I'll shoot a YouTube video for them. Because reality is if someone's wondering something, it's likely other people are as well. And I mean, video is like my jam. I love it. It's so much fun. And I mean, video and social media is like, those are the things where you guys can plan ahead. You can, you can practice, you can prep yourself so that you can live that life by design. You can go to your kiddos, you know, um, Taekwondo tournament and not have to be looking at your phone and walk outside all the time. Yep. Yep. Love it. So then in those watching lesson, we'll have links below, um, to all, Rachel's different social media channels, YouTube, they'll make it super easy. Anyway, you can just go click and, and connect from there. Now, Instagram, you know, is something over that really, you know, I mean, I don't know if, I know others that for years have been getting a lot of business off of it, but, you know, at least for me, I've noticed a big shift in the last year, you know, and I don't know if it's, you know, for a lot of years, it was like Instagram, the average age is 18 to 25. And now if it's, you know, the age that's up and coming where they're, they're entering more into the real estate market, you know, where millennials are, are coming in. Yeah. Um, but is there any, you know, cause they're all a little bit of a different breed, you know, Facebook to Instagram. Is there anything that you're doing special on Instagram that you find is, is working really well that you recommend that age? And it's like, you got, you got to tap into this. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm really active on Instagram. Um, my Facebook posts and my Instagram posts are identical. They're not linked they're always posted separately. Uh, I'm really intentional about my hashtags because that is where a lot of my new followers come from is they're searching specific hashtags that I'm um, talking about. So that app I told you about Google keep, I will have a specific, so you can only post 30 hashtags at a time on each post. So I will have like my real estate specific hashtags that have the highest interaction an impact. And I will like do the research ahead of time and see if I'm, you know, if it's real estate coaching or if it's clean eating or whatever the post is going to be about, I will see the 30 most popular hashtags. Um, there's an app that I love called hashtag. Uh, it's only for Apple. So sorry if you don't have an Apple get with program. Um, my husband doesn't have an Apple. So it's like our normal argument in our house cause he's an Android guy. Um, but the hashtag app is so awesome. So I always am really intentional about my hashtags. Um, I am big on having a specific theme on social media when it comes to Instagram. So all my pictures have the same colors, the same vibe, the same feel, because I find the people who have the most uh, followers, they you go to their page expecting something specific. I keep my message really consistent. So if you're going to go to Whole Foods, um, 
uh, Instagram, you're going to expect colorful photos of food. You're going to expect consistency, recipes, bright things. When they come to my page, they're going to see my marriage, inspirational posts, real estate posts, um, our network marketing, our shampoo company. They're going to talk about, we're going to talk about that. Like they know exactly what they're coming to my page for. Um, I'm, I'm really big on not being a victim. So they're not going to come to my page and say like, the, Oh, what was me today sucks. Like that's never what I'm going to talk about. And then my favorite thing with Instagram is the story. Stories. I feel like I have much more freedom and flexibility on Instagram than I do Facebook because I feel like Facebook's a little more of a business platform for me and Instagram's more of like a personal connection and then people do business with the people they like. So my stories are much more like my hair is all raggedy. I'm sitting on the couch with my husband and we're just like joking about something. Whereas I wouldn't put that on Facebook, but I feel like Instagram, what I like about it is it's these little snippets, these little snapshots into someone's life and you feel like you're their friend. Um, I have a, a slightly unhealthy obsession with pineapples. I love them. <laughs> and um, not the fruit, just the image of a pineapple. Um, and for what it, what it represents to me, um, my husband lived in Hawaii for nine years and I love the message behind Aloha. I think it's just all things good and beautiful and connected in this world. And that's what a pineapple is to me. And so I've, I've talked about pineapples on social media and there was this pair of um, shoes that came out and I am not kidding you. I got this thing sent to me 26 times, 26 times from this ad of people screenshotting this one specific sandal that they sent to me. And it's really cute. And I bought it from like the first person. Then I got it sent to me 25 more times. And I was like, man, social media really does connect people because they're in their normal lives. They see a pineapple and they're thinking about that real estate agent in California that you know, posted an inspirational video about you that Will Smith posted that, you know I mean? It's like, it's just this, this cycle, but you get to have these beautiful connections with others and it's just so powerful. Yeah. Love it. So this might be a silly question, but let's just say, you know, you and your husband are out to dinner, you know, tonight, but that's non-working time, not Facebook or, or social media scheduling time, but you do a nice picture together. You know, are you going to wait till like the next morning before you post that or, you know, I, and again, it might be a silly question, but if you're yeah. being intentional, I think some people get yeah, you because know, it, it becomes such a reactive in the moment thing for a lot of people. So it depends. If I posted only, if I have not posted that day, I will post in the moment because I think it's kind of funny to post the next morning about, you know, uh, the dinner you had and talking about it like really present. Um, but sometimes like if I'm at a concert or something, I will take really good photos and get some video and I'll post the next morning about like how incredible that was or what it meant to me. But like if it's Valentine's day and I'm at dinner with Ryan and we're taking a photo, I'm going to post it on Valentine's day and write some smushy gushy post, but I've probably prepped the wording for that post ahead of time so that I'm not taking away from the moment. Yeah. Love it. And then, uh, and again, I know that we've only got a few minutes left here, but I want to talk about uh, your coaching that you do because um, I think last time that you were on the show, you were just starting uh, uh, your coaching program. And, you know, so, I mean, I don't know if it's the same program that we talked about last time, which I believe was, you know, a lot of health and fitness stuff um, or, or if it's, you know, real estate agent specific, you know, can you just like, what, what, what's the coaching business and so my coaching is definitely real estate related now. That's kind of been my focus. So I created a program called um, From Limited to Legendary, your fast track to becoming a top 1000 agent. And it's basically, it's a pre-recorded 10 session webinar series that has a workbook. So you'll get your your video and you download a workbook with it and they work together. And then I have a private Facebook mastermind group. Um, and I do every month I go in there live and I do about an hour of, um, Q and a, so it's a group coaching program, but with a one-on-one -on -one feel and it's open to any brokerage. Um, it really is everything I wish I know when I started. So I have top 100 agents in the whole country in there that just needs like some new fresh ideas. I have brand new agents who just got licensed. I have investors. Um, so we start with like the mega agent mindset. So like, what is the mindset behind a mega agent? Like, what does that look like? And then we dig into um, your database. So or, I'm sorry, marketing and brand awareness. So every person literally gets to rebrand their business and we teach them how to get referrals from rebranding their business. Um, we talk about then the database Database. So each person, that 33 touch database program, we literally get to go through it and have a 33 touch database campaign and everyone gets to do that together. Um, 10 X the buying process, 10 X the listing process, the lifeblood of our business. We go through systems. There's a week all for admins on like how you 
properly set the expectations with your clients, um, a whole week on talent, like who to hire, when to hire, what do you say when you're ready to grow, a week on personal growth. Um, and yeah, it's, it's awesome. So we'll, I'll make sure to give you the info so you can link that too, but it is super fun. We, I really, coaching is like a love of my life. Like I really enjoy giving back to the industry. And, and I mean, you and I wouldn't be what we are without amazing coaches and mentors that we've had. And it's the ultimate hack to success, yeah. right? I mean, if you want the, the, the ultimate as far as the quickest way, the cheapest way, the most effective way, right? You just, you don't reinvent the wheel. You go to those, you tap into those that have done it before you, you implement exactly what they do. And again, R and D rip off and duplicate. And well, it's so like powerful the same thing. Like just, you know, you and I talked about it earlier, but I, I never, the fourth business we're in, it's, it's network marketing. And I always said I would never, ever be that girl. I was like, I am not the person that will ever talk about network marketing. Like get out of my face. I don't want to go to your party. Like I'm not that person. And I was actually told about the company that I'm in now for um, seven months. She was like, come to my party, come to my shampoo party, come to this. And I was like, please don't like, I'm not doing it. And it's like, it didn't work until it, I needed it. Right. And then, um, my mom, she got ruined twice within like six months and all her hair started falling out and, um, she was on 23 medications and it was super crazy. And then I, and, and this girl who kept inviting me to this like shampoo party, I, I ended up going to a bachelorette party and she was there. And the next morning I went for a run cause we had some cocktails in it before. And she was like, are you going to take a shower before brunch? I'm like, yeah. She's like, why don't you try my shampoo? I was like, Oh my God, like you were so annoying. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, fine, I'll try it. And so she kind of explains to me what it's going to do and how it's going to work. And I went in the shower and I had this like shower orgasm thing happen. And I was like, what is on my head right now? And I got out and like my hair styled better. It held the curl longer. And it felt, it was like, I undid this damage I'd done and my hair would fall out when I was in the shower. And then when I blow dry, like, well, I'm sure you deal with this with your wife. Like there's more hair on the ground and it gets stuck in your toes and you're like, come on. Um, and so I get out and she's telling me about the, she's showing me these before and after pictures and it's like kids with alopecia and moms with postpartum hair loss and women like me who've just like dyed their hair. And all of a sudden I was like, Oh my gosh, like this could help my mom. And then she tells me about the growth trajectory of the company. And, and it's just like, it was so insane. And it, to me, it was like, I, I was like, okay, I think I'm going to look into this, but then you have to go home and convince a mechanical engineer who's very logical and that was a whole nother conversation. But ultimately we decided that it would be a good choice for our family. And like my whole thing was like, I can hustle and I can grind and I can do real estate. However, I sell one house and I make money. But if I stop selling houses, I stop making money. And um, Gary Keller, he's the founder of Keller Williams. He always says, you know, the average millionaire has seven streams of income. And I realized like I needed a passive income stream where income was regular coming in. And because I have like the coaching aspect in my life, I was like, this is really going to be no different than real estate. So I'm going to have scripts. I'm going to have objection handlers. I'm going to have templates. And, and I got to plug in and build this whole business. Now we have like 5,000 people on our team and we drive the car that I said I'd never drive. And we go on these amazing vacations, but we have 5,000 people we get to help impact their life. So it's like, regardless of the industry you're in, like you, you know, we have the opportunity to change people's lives. If you're listening, if you make it all about you, you're never going to get there. But if you make your purpose about how you can add value to others, whether it's buying a house, whether it's, you know, giving them more money in their pocketbook or fixing their hair, like it doesn't matter as long as you have the mindset that you always want to give. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, to the rest of the world, those that, achieve big success, you know, right? Self-made people that go out there and, and make it on a massive level. To the rest of the world, you know, to a lot of people, they might look greedy. I've been blessed to, to just meet with and have so many conversations and even, you know, have lunch with, with you know, several billionaires over the years and, and have guys like Grant Cardone on the show and, and Ryan Blair, the CEO of Vysalis and um, I, it, every single one of them. And again, I noticed some may look greedy, but every single one of them leads from such a massive place of contribution. And then money always follows. I've yet to meet anybody that's made it to a huge level of success, financial wealth by, you know, through, through building a business that doesn't lead from that place of contribution. You know, they're not thinking about how am I going to get rich tomorrow? You know, right. It's, it's, so how am I going to go out there and, and impact people's lives? And, and the money always follows. 
totally. And it doesn't mean that it starts that way. Like when I started, I was paycheck behind a paycheck and every deal counted, every dollar counted. And then I got to the place where I was making enough money and I was like, well, what happens now? How do, what do I do with all this money? Cause I thought when I got the money, I would feel so fulfilled. And I was like, this is it. I got the money. I'm good to go. But I need, there's more to life than just money. And so it's figuring out like what actually makes you tick. And that's kind of the next level. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And speaking of impact, I know you got to go drop all your brilliant knowledge on a bunch of agents that are, that are uh, waiting for you to go speak to them here um, in just a moment. So uh, those that are watching and listening, I know I end every podcast with this, but information without implementation is truly just the start of delusion. Information is no longer power. It's taking that information, taking action on it. That gives you the power to go out there and create the life that you know you want and deserve. And Rachel showed so many amazing pieces of advice with you today. Take something that you learn, go out there and take massive action. So again, you can create that life you know you want and deserve. And Rachel, dude, as always, man, this is, this is a blast. Um, I mean, I, it's, I was sitting there thinking as you're going, I'm like, you have so much brilliant, just information and knowledge. I'm like, I, I gotta start having you on like once a month. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, um, I really feel like we have so much to talk about. I'm like, I want to dig so deep into like this, this, and this, and then we get like little snippets. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll, we'll do a, a, a re, uh, number four here in the next six months or so. So truly, truly appreciate and honor you. And, and uh, dude, it means a lot that you've made this time to come on. I know your, your life's crazy right now. I'm busy and, and uh, truly means a lot. Thank you, friend. Good to see you. And next time we talk, I'll have had a little baby. Yeah, no, that's, that's going to be amazing. Um, all right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Listen, we'll see you next time. All right. Bye.